This is part six of my guide to how to play Corps Commander. In this case, I'll be covering morale, observation, and a few other miscellaneous rules. I will start with morale. Well, basically, when certain conditions occur, elements will need to do a test, and players may lose control of their elements as a result. The morale rules cover the occasions where an element's cohesion is lost, when in the face of apparent death or destruction, the troops panic attempt to, and attempt to escape from the enemy. This is called a disrupted. All control has been lost until the element's morale can be rallied. Disruption is caused when an element loses a close combat or when it fails a morale test. In some cases, a morale test occurs immediately after the cause, such as if it suffers very heavy losses, or is attacked by weapons which have a significant effect on morale. <clears throat> in other cases, the morale test occurs during the morale test subphase. Finally, a player can voluntarily conduct a morale test in order to rally a disrupted element. When taking a morale test, the player spins a 10-sided dice and applies the morale test modifiers to the die roll. The result is then compared against the element's morale rating, which is a value from 1 to 9. The results are rally, or no effect, dispersed and retreat, disrupted and retreat, or surrender. Apart from the initial route move of 6 centimeters, a disrupted element must route or retreat towards cover during each route move subphase. Cover is defined as city, town, village, heavy woods, forest, jungle, or broken terrain. In this case, a route move is an element's maximum movement allowance. We will now cover observation, or how to calculate the distance you can sight an enemy element. In order to conduct most forms of fire combat against an enemy element, it must be observed. Or if conducting area fire or interdiction fire, the fall of shot must be observed. The only case where fire combat can occur without observing the enemy element, or fall of shot, is counter-battery fire. The observation rules are based on two factors, the base observation range of the element being observed and an observation modifier which is multiplied by the base observation range to arrive at the range an element can be observed in centimetres. A clear line of sight must also exist between the two elements. A number of exceptions may occur due to lighting conditions, weather conditions and terrain. The first step is to determine the base observation range. This is dependent on the enemy type and its mode, or if towed artillery, if it's limited or unlimited. Artillery base observation range can also be affected by its calibre. Each element is classed as a vehicle, artillery or infantry. Artillery which is being towed is classed as a vehicle, which includes being towed by horses. Mounted infantry is classed as a vehicle, which includes being carried by horses or other animals. When artillery is unlimited, its base observation range is dependent on its calibre and its carriage. For example, anti-tank guns would normally use a low-profile carriage, which would make it harder to sight. Finally, a special base observation range is used for area interdiction fire. Once players have determined the element's type, mode and size, they can determine the base observation range. The next step is to determine the observation modifier. This is dependent on weather, lighting conditions, terrain, target activity and the observer's activity. The modifiers are totaled and are multiplied by the base observation range to arrive at the distance the element can be observed in centimetres. In this slide we can see the weather and lighting condition modifiers. You'll notice that there are special modifiers for elements equipped with infrared image intensification, low light television and thermal imaging. The use of these mod mod modifiers is dependent on whether the observing element is equipped with these visibility aids. It should also be noted that a moonless night includes an overclass night, even if a moon is present. A player can only apply one modifier from each of these lists. This slide shows the terrain modifiers. Some of these terrain modifiers are optional, such as infantry in brush, rough terrain or behind an embankment, or wall. Players would only apply one of the terrain modifiers and in some cases is dependent on the target element's mode, such as being a road in travel or concentrated mode. The next set of observation modifiers are dependent on the activities conducted by the observing element, or any special conditions such as being fortified or in smoke. 
Players select as many of these as is applicable. When an element moves or fires in a fire combat or movement phase, this will need to be noted, as it affects their observation range in the following game turns, and in some cases phases. If an element did not fire in the previous game turn, but fires in the current fire subphase, it does not count as being having fired. This is because the observation determination is conducted at the beginning of the subphase. However, if an element fired in the direct fire subphase, it counts as fired for the following indirect fire subphase in the same fire phase. This means a concealed element which fires in a direct fire subphase can be fired upon with indirect fire in the immediately following indirect fire subphase. The final set of modifiers are dependent on the observing element's previous activities or current mode or elevation. The observing player uses as many modifiers which are applicable from this list. In this example, the M901 is attempting to observe the T62, which moved in its last movement phase. It is daylight and visibility is good, which means there is no rain, snow or other weather conditions which affect visibility. The T62 base observation range is 8cm. There is a plus 1 modifier because the T62 is moving and a plus 4 modifier because it's good visibility, resulting in a final observation modifier of plus 5. This is multiplied by the base observation range of 8cm to arrive at 40cm. The T62 is visible up to 40 centimetres, which means it is, it is visible in this case. The M901 now determines if it can sight the 25mm M40, which fired at it in the last game turn. The 25mm anti-aircraft gun has a base observation range of 3 centimetres. The observation modifiers are plus 2 because the 25mm anti-aircraft gun fired and a plus 4 because it's a good visibility, for a total observation modifier of plus 6. This results in an observation range of 18 centimetres, which means the 25mm anti-aircraft gun is not visible. The M901 can see the line of fire and can call in unobserved indirect fire on the M25, the 25mm anti-aircraft gun during the indirect fire subphase, but it cannot conduct direct fire against it. There are a number of special observation cases which are covered in this slide. If the weather condition is fog, you can only observe an enemy element if adjacent, unless you are equipped with thermal imaging. If both elements are within town, city, forest or jungle terrain, they can only observe each other if adjacent. If both elements are in smoke, broken, open woods or heavy wood terrain, they can only observe each other if within 2 centimetres. If an element is on the edge of any terrain, its ability to observe is not affected, and when it is being observed, players apply the respective standard terrain modifier observation modifiers. In order to observe an element, a clear line of sight must exist. This can be blocked by hills and terrain features, all of which have an elevation. If the observer and target are on different elevations and there is blocking terrain between, the players may need to calculate a line of sight between the two points. Troops can hide behind a crest of a hill. An element is considered behind the crest of a hill if observed from within 45 degrees to its front. In this case, if a player declares the element is behind the crest of a hill, then the line of sight is blocked. There are no rules covering blocking a line of sight due to friendly or enemy elements, so the following rules are optional. Friendly elements do not block a line of sight. Visible enemy elements block a line of sight, except infantry on foot do not block a line of sight to a vehicle, artillery, or an element conducting fire combat in the current game turn or previous fire and movement phase. We will now, now cover weather and climatic conditions. While Bruce indicate, included a wide range of weather condition effects, he never detailed when these weather conditions would be used and if weather could change. I feel that Bruce, Bruce expected to, this to be contained in any scenario details, and this is the correct place to define weather. However, weather can change and some optional weather rule changes have been included. The original Corps Commander contained some rules concerning weather and no rules concerning changing weather. Most of the weather rules concerned modifiers when certain weather conditions occurred. It was assumed weather conditions and weather change details would be contained in the scenario guidelines. The weather types listed here is fog, heat haze and dust storm. In all cases these weather conditions affect observation and in the case of dust storms can also affect movement and close assault. The weather types listed in this video or slide include rain, heavy rain or tropical storm, snow and heavy snow or blizzard. 
These weather conditions all affect observation and for some weather types could affect close assault. If some of the weather conditions continue long enough, it would affect the terrain, which has an effect on movement. No rules for how these weather conditions occur or if they could change during the game are provided. The weather change rules listed in the training videos are all optional. Any weather change is determined in the weather change determination subphase, which occurs during the initiative phase. It is based on the unmodified initiative die roll of the attacker. If the attacker spins a 10, weather can improve, as this also means the attacker will have a high initiative. It's an overall good result for that player. If the attacker spins a 1, the weather can deteriorate, as this also means the attacker will have a low initiative. This is an overall bad result for that player. This can be modified based on the climatic region or season the game is being fought in. So in an Arctic climatic region during winter, the, change, the chance of weather deteriorating is increased. Finally, what the weather will becomes when it deteriorates is also determined by the climatic region and season. In Europe, there are four climatic regions. These are Arctic, cold, warm and dry. In Asia, there is also a tropical climatic region. The type of weather possible is dependent on climatic regions, so a blizzard cannot occur in a dry climatic region and a dust storm cannot occur in an arctic climatic region. There are four seasons, spring, summer, autumn and winter. The exception is the tropical climatic region, where there is only a wet season and dry season. The seasons also affect the weather available, so a blizzard will not occur in summer and a tropical storm will not occur during the dry season. This shows the three weather change paths, which are snow, rain and heat haze. In most cases, during winter, snow will occur and during summer, rain will occur. During autumn or spring, either rain or snow could occur, depending on climatic conditions or a die roll. If in tropical climatic regions, snow cannot occur and the occurrence of rain will increase during wet season. If it's arctic, rain cannot occur and the occurrence of snow will increase. If it's the desert, heat haze and dust storms will occur instead of rain or snow. The climatic region and season will also affect when dusk and dawn occurs. This means the number of daylight game turns will vary, and because night game turns span 120 minutes, the total number of game turns will also vary. It's often simpler to keep all game turn lengths to 60 minutes and simply skip all even-numbered night game turns. Before a game begins, both players will need to define the climatic region, the season, and any starting weather. This would normally be contained in any scenario details, but if playing a generic scenario, players may still need to decide this. Any weather changes determined using the optional weather change rules. Fog is the only weather condition which needs to be specially determined. Players will need to determine if it occurs and its duration. It has a major effect on the game, so players will need to consider when and how to use this very carefully. Players will also need to determine if the night has a move. Moon has no moon or is overcast. Fighting at night, while a valid ta tactic, will exhaust your tro troops before the end of the day. If fighting a scenario where one player is the attacker for the entire day, this may be viable as the attacker will have sufficient forces to allow part of his army to rest. But in a scenario where one player attacks and the other counter attacks, the attacker is asking for trouble if he starts the game at night. In this section we'll be generally covering terrain. More of an overview. Terrain is classed as a base, area and linear. Base terrain is the de default terrain of the playing area. This can be clear, step, plain, desert or in some special cases, hard snow. Area terrain is a terrain feature which occupies an area no larger than a 30 cm tile or square, such as forest, um, hill, etc. Linear terrain spans a 30 cm tile and is normally not wide, examples including a row. It normally extends from player edge to player edge. Base terrain is either clear, plain, step, desert or snow, although this can be classed as area terrain as well. Elements undispersed in plain, step and desert are easier to hit with direct fire and suffer a plus one modifier and are easier to observe and suffer a plus one observation modifier. Elements in plain, step and desert do not suffer the dispersed movement penalty. Elements in base snow terrain have special movement effects, normally negative. Gentle hills represents gently sloping hills which provide no movement penalty but can block a line of sight. Hills can be low, medium and high, representing elevation one, two and three respectively. Steep hills have a movement effect. 
Dispersed elements in Broken Drain gain a minus 2 defensive modifier against direct or indirect fire and are more difficult to see and gain a minus 2 observation modifier. Elements in Broken or Swamp Terrain have a movement impact and must be dispersed. Dispersed elements in Rough or Swamp gain a Terrain gain a minus 1 defensive modifier against direct or indirect fire. Elements in Rough Terrain are more difficult to see and gain a minus 1 observation modifier. Elements in Rough or Sand Terrain have a movement impact. Dispersed elements in brush, open woods, terrain gain a minus one defensive modifier against direct or indirect fire. Elements on foot in brush, terrain are more difficult to see and gain a minus one observation modifier. Elements in open wood terrain are more difficult to see and gain a minus one observation modifier. Elements in heavy wood, forest or jungle terrain are very difficult to see and gain a minus two observation modifier. Elements in open, heavy wood, forest or jungle terrain have a movement impact. Dispersed elements in heavy wood, forest or jungle terrain gain a minus two defensive modifier against direct or indirect fire. Dispersed elements in village, town or town terrain gain a minus two defensive modifier against direct or indirect fire. Dispersed elements in city terrain gain a minus three defensive modifier against direct or indirect fire. Elements in village terrain are more difficult to see and gain a minus one observation modifier. Elements in town get a minus two observation modifier and elements in city get a minus three observation modifier. Incidentally, village is normally regarded as elevation one, town two, and city three. Streams represent flowing bodies of waters which can be forded at any points of its length. Crossing streams will impede movement after disrupting the element's formation. Visibility and line of sight are not affected and there is some cover when defending a stream bank. Smaller streams, such called minor streams, have no effect in the game and are used for aesthetic reasons only. Large streams represent flowing bodies of water which can be forded at any point of its length by dismounted troops or vehicles which have fording capability of at least 1.5 metres. Other vehicles cannot cross and require a ford or bridge if they wish to cross. Visibility and line of sight are not affected and there is some cover when defending a large stream bank. Minor rivers represent flowing bodies of water too, feet, too deep to ford except at nominated fords. Except at fords they stop movement but have no visibility or line of sight effect. When defending against an amphibious assault, it provides some cover. Rivers represent flowing bodies of water too deep to ford or have a ford on it. Thus, it stops all movement. It has no visibility or line of sight effect. When defending against an amphibious assault, it provides some cover. Waterways represent for rivers which can only be crossed with special equipment or other bodies of water such as lakes or sea edges. It is too deep to ford and stops all movement. Fords allow elements to cross major streams and rivers if, as if they were crossing a stream. A ford may not be crossed in travel mode, otherwise it has no effect on movement. A bridge allows a tract, road or railway to cross a waterway, river or stream. Elements moving on a track, road or railway on a bridge move as if the water feature was not present. Obviously an element moving across the bridge cannot leave the bridge while it's over the water. If forced to do so, it's eliminated. When crossing a bridge, its terrain is sealed road. Tracks are unsealed paths which allow the movement of foot-wheeled track vehicles through difficult terrain. Foot and animals can move along tracks unimpeded, however other vehicles move over as if it's clear terrain. It has no effect on visibility line of sight and offers no cover. Tracks are a special type of linear terrain which do not need to span the table, e table edge to edge. Roads are purpose-built pathways designed for vehicles as well as foot. Minor roads are unsealed, major roads are sealed. They negate the effect of difficult terrain and provide movement benefits for wheeled and tracked vehicles. Autobahns are purpose-built sealed pathways designed for vehicles as well as foot traffic. They negate the effect of difficult terrain and provide movement benefits for wheeled and tracked vehicles. This concludes part 6 of my Corps Commander training series and apart from miscellaneous videos after this it pretty much completes my beginner's guide to Corps Commander. Most of the other videos that I'll be providing will be designed to meet or answer specific things like how do I launch an air attack, how do I conduct indirect fire etc or provide examples of games or other miscellaneous things. Denken Sie daran, immer für Hill, ein Matlen zu kämpfen.